Pa-auto ka rin, no? Kaibigan ko yun si Benji. Gagoy pa nga niya akong nino ng anak niya, eh. Hindi siya kaibigan. Customer siya. Yung customer, pinapaload mo. Ako na kaibigan mo, katrabaho mo, hindi mo kaya masalo. James Maya's Kuya West is a film that mostly flew under the radar during its Cinemalaya run. Many saw the film as a simple story about a remittance clerk who falls in love with a regular customer. Some saw it as a commentary on mental illness, a clever approach to the OFW narrative, and some saw the largely one-sided love affair as a little creepy. While I don't agree with all of these viewpoints, they are all valid in their own ways. But I'd like to talk about an aspect of the film that exists in plain sight, an aspect that leads me to my personal interpretation of the film. Here's my take. The first clue, so to say, that points to this aspect was present in Maya's debut feature, 2017's The Chanters. The majority of that film was shot in a boxy aspect ratio, only to switch to a wider ratio when the main character's viewpoint has significantly widened. One thing's for sure, the director knows the importance of telling a story visually through manipulation of the composition and the mise en scene. So let's go back to Kuya Wes. Do you notice something? The film seems to be pushing our protagonist to the side of the frame, or putting a barrier between us and him, as well as a barrier between him and other characters. This to me is what the film is trying to say about him. To others, he merely exists in the background, almost out of sight but not quite. We see him every day, but we don't know him personally. He is defined via his interactions with others, having no self-identity to show us. The movie is an ode to invisible people, and considering the unseen but deeply felt role OFWs have in this story, the ode extends to them as well. We only see our protagonist in the center of the frame when he's deeply in love. For most of the film, the only character who exists with him on the same space, meaning the character who knows him the most, is his co-worker Joy, played by Moe Marcampo. When he tries to reach out to his customer Erica, barriers are crossed and she exists in the same space with him as well. But what dooms the central romance of Kuya Wes is also reflected in the existence of those barriers. You see, the barrier goes both ways as well. Wes may know Erica through her behavior inside the remittance center, but he doesn't know her as a person. He doesn't know her as a mother who has to raise her two young children in the face of having lost her main source of income. When he makes this realization and is rejected, the film cruelly finds him in the center frame, but it is a spotlight that he does not want. We spend the entire movie judging this man, and he spends the entire movie judging her, but both of us, audience and protagonist both, judge on false assumptions. When our protagonist finally reveals something about himself, his true name, it is a candid yet fleeting moment, telling us that we are all islands, infinitely more complex than just a name and an address. Lilisan Hindi Ko Naman yata Ni ka mamatay Kung hindi Ko Mawakan Ng iyong kamay